meant to say UCC, I know that, but um, since he talked about his own books continually using the word vanilla, not re realising that in terms of Elaine's uh, genre, that has a particular uh, uh, meaning, but he's a very innocent young fellow. Um, the, uh, this is a, a hostile crowd, so uh, on my first slide uh, is, is a, a complete um, hostage to fortune, so I'll put it up quickly for about 10 seconds and then take it right down. So I uh, would like to, uh, to, to speak in praise of the cute whore uh, and uh, to say that uh, uh, that person, male or female, should be brought back to the center of uh, Irish politics rather than to periphery, exactly the opposite of what Joe said uh, introducing this afternoon's uh, uh, sessions. I tried to work on the notion of something other than a, uh, a stroke uh, and maybe get the word political poke uh, involved, but when I showed it to my daughter, she said, you're going to talk about Facebook, so apparently it's, uh, I don't mean the Facebook uh, uh, loose intrusion, but rather the uh, impact of civil servants in, in, in prodding or in, 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 I think, nudging is a more effective word, uh, the bureaucrats to do uh, what, they, uh, what they should be doing. And I'm very taken by, I'm very grateful to be asked uh, here, I used to, uh, although uh, the, the chair said that uh, I'm from Munster, and I normally say uh, I normally wouldn't say this, but I'm from Abbey Field, and my name is Collins. So, uh, the uh, but I spent a lot of time in uh, uh, in, uh, in Donegal, so it's great to get back. But I hadn't uh, expected to come back to a religious a religious revival meeting, uh, which is what I think this has the flavour of. Um, uh, it, it's been de rigueur to to knock the church at every possible moment for everything. Apparently, they're to blame for the weather. I think global warming was thrown in by one of the speakers uh, uh, this morning. Uh, but it does really feel like a religious event here, to the extent that some of the speakers and some of the, uh, uh, the congregation went this morning and emerged, uh, immersed themselves in the chilly Atlantic waters, uh, presumably for some, uh, for, uh, for, for some religious uh, benefit that they were going to, uh, to get. And like a religious uh, meeting, we got a text. Have you got the little booklet in there? Yeah. Uh, we, we were given a text to reflect on before we gave our, our speeches. And uh, my text was on page eight, I think, um, here. Um, and it said, uh, in terms of national politics, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael were born of civil war divisions uh, about how to shape society. The practice of politics... Uh, Yes, I've gone from page two to page three. I will read it from here. Uh, the practice uh, of uh, politics became about the nature. Uh, yeah, there's a misquote in the book, so I'll get it from my own. I have to look it up myself. Yeah. Uh, the, I'll give you the correct, uh, correct passage here. It's a good way to start, isn't it? Correcting the actual reading. It actually said, and I looked it up, uh, the practice of politics became about the spoils of the system rather than engagement with the idea about the nature of citizenship. It is in this political culture about doing favours to get re-elected, pulling strokes, may fainism rather than national interest that corruption uh, we have seen over several decades and indeed since the foundation of the state has been allowed to foster. Now, uh, I actually kind of disagree with that fundamentally and the, my actually area of research interest currently uh, is, in, uh, is in China, uh, my forthcoming book, which will sell a lot less copies than Pat's and a lot less than the other book referred to earlier on. It will be in all good bookshops in August. But it looks at a country where they really do do corruption. Uh, he might be called Ming, but Bo Xi Lai, he's not. Uh, the notion that we should have a week of complete introspection seems to me to be uh, uh, unhelpful. There's not a single paper... Uh, here, as far as I can see, on a non-Irish experience. And it, it's, it partly, I think, is to do uh, with the notion that we need to feel, we need to feel uh, guilty, perhaps, in a post-Catholic uh, world. So let me say, mea pocultura, mea capultura, mea maxima capultura, um, and uh, apparently it's in the ablative, I got that checked before I came out. And to say that my central thesis is that the level of corruption is overestimated, that discretionary judgments and localism should be valued, that we need fewer judges, not more, in the system, 
and that more parliamentary democracy would ensure accountability. So uh, I, I can see, I can feel your hostility already. <laughs> and if there is, if there is a need for more transparency and accountability, ministers are the problem, not TDs. Now I have no doubt that there was a sense of scandal and hurt among the electorate uh, after the revelations of the tribunals regarding the scale of corruption, the money involved, the range of, bus of business and political figures implicated. And in an atmosphere of scandal, uh, many now assert that all politicians are guilty of corruption. In the latest Eurobarometer report on attitudes of Europeans towards corruption, 86% of Irish people surveyed agreed that corruption was a major problem within Ireland. 70% thought that uh, the government's efforts to combat uh, corruption uh, are not uh, effective. But I think the debate we have, a lot of the debate we've been having about transparency and accountability is replete with non-evidence-based diagnoses. For example, it is not true that greater levels of corruption are associated with greater levels of state spending or the scope of state activity. Uh, the, people, the countries that come at the top of the non-corrupt league, the the rather reverse transparency index, are those of very high uh, spending from the social democratic countries of, of Scandinavia. Uh, but we're allowed to, we, we allow this, to, uh, to, be, we allow this uh, to go on because it makes us feel uh, better without, I think, looking at uh, the evidence. And the evidence, it seems to me, is that for most Irish citizens, their interaction with the state is routine and at a local level. There is no expectation that, that bribes are required to obtain or facilitate services from local government, uh, uh, state or related agencies. And despite the, uh, the infrequent occasions of uh, corruption in, uh, in Ireland, for the most part the bureaucracy is not uh, extractive or arbitrary. I spent some time this year in India, uh, statements you couldn't possibly say uh, about there. Local government outside planning I know that's a big caveat. Uh, in local government outside planning, uh, uh, corruption is, I suggest, uh, fairly in incidental. And that it occurs, it occurs where politicians have a direct role in deciding specific and individual policy decisions of high value to wealthy uh, business interests, bread seeking opportunities in the jargon. Where civil servants routinely exercise discretion over commercially valuable decisions in the context of lax accountability and ambiguous policy uh, objectives. I think the common agricultural policy is full of those. And where ministerial decisions are both commercially charged and policy criteria are in, uh, insufficiently explicit. But these conditions are, I feel, infrequently uh, fulfilled and are seldom the experience of citizens. When citizens seek the intervention of a politician, not uncommonplace in, uh, in Ireland, money of and favours are not uh, exchanged. And yet, 65% of citizens think that giving and taking of bribes is widespread among our politicians. Yet Transparency International, the, who do collect evidence and who do publish their evidence, summarised in the Irish uh, country study, Ireland has uh, made substantial progress in strengthening legal and institutional safeguards against corruption over the past 15 years. In addition, the scale of petty corruption is perceived to be amongst the lowest measured anywhere in the world. So to get, it seems to me, to get the scale of uh, what we're looking at here wrong also um, invites the danger, invites the danger of also getting the prescription uh, uh, wrong. And the result, uh, the result of this approach, it seems to me, is increased uh, uh, cynicism. And you can see that in the, in the literature from other countries uh, where the rhetoric is high, the, uh, uh, the measures are low, and cynicism is the uh, result. And for me, if we are going to redesign the system, then it must be congruent in some way with the values and experiences uh, of, the, of the jurisdiction. Uh, the, the, the last session was giving out that nothing ever happens. There's always promises nothing ever happens and the blame was being spread around. Possibly nothing ever happens because the analysis is wrong in the first place. Uh, 
And uh, if, it, if we spent a bit more time on that and looking uh, outside of ourselves, less introspection, less uh, religiosity about the whole thing, then we might get to a, uh, a more sustainable reform uh, process. As the Thornist said last night, you can't legislate for honesty, and no matter what voting system you have, uh, the outcomes uh, will reflect our broad political culture. Our legislators are concerned with local uh, issues because Irish people want them to be and reward them for such behaviour. They, they do so knowing that their vote can be differentiated from the crowd and the data backs this up. As Michael Marsh told an Oireachtas committee recently, all the evidence is that people like their particular politician, the one uh, for whom they vote. They just don't think much of the rest of them. And for any one candidate, getting between 7,000 and 8,000 uh, first preference votes is enough to secure election. I know you, I know you can go much, much lower than that, but uh, the rational candidate will have a figure like that uh, in, their, in their mind. And this means garnering personal support by being active uh, locally. But critics of this activity, it seems to me, uh, undervalue constituency uh, work because they juxtapose it with some supposedly more lofty activity, like our quote did. I can't, uh, lost the quote again, but anyway, like our, like our text did, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, as if we could ascribe to uh, legislators, uh, oh yeah, I've got it here, something en engaging with the ideas of the nature of citizenship. I'd prefer you to help me to get my daughter off a trolley, but if you want to engage with the nature of citizenship, that will be fine. A similar... Uh, a, a similar idea which I think is fairly bankrupt in our uh, system, which we just has trotted out the whole uh, time, is the idea that we have non-political civil servants or bureaucrats uh, uh, in general. In formal terms, the delivery of public services in Ireland is fashioned on the Wilsonian uh, dichotomy. I didn't bother with that slide, I think. Uh, but somebody mentioned the Tammany Hall this morning. I think it was Frank. Uh, the reaction to the Tammany Hall uh, experience uh, under actually the only professor of public administration ever to become president of the United States, uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson. So good luck to Woodrow. Uh, after I, I hear that Woody Guthrie was named last week, just a useless piece of information. Anyway, the distinction between, the distinction between uh, policy and administration is bogus, I think. Um, the formula assigns general issues of allocation to politicians and specific entitlements to bureaucrats. However, the notion that you can make this separation, it seems to me, is unhelpful. For example, it asserts that public servants are politically neutral, even those who were lauded this morning. I noticed this. Uh, yeah, apparently, uh, public servants are, are much more to be trusted if they've studied economics and they're economically literate and somehow competent. And uh, apparently, of planners... Planners live in a really rare, reified existence where their value judgments are simply the translation of technical decisions, it would appear. Now, while it may be that they're non-partisan, uh, few, I think, would agree that our civil servants, uh, the, the, the thoughts of our civil servants, the, the beliefs of our civil servants are irrelevant to the political process. The insights of Simon and Limblom and others show that bureaucracies exhibit a larger measure of irrationality and have distinctive goals of their own. Why wouldn't they? How could you work in an area of public policy for your entire, entire life and be expected not to have firm views? You hang around waiting for some politician to come through the door to tell you what the, uh, the best policy is likely to be? Very unlikely, it seems to me. Just in, in, incredible. And it's clear uh, in our system that the politicians are active in trying to influence, uh, trying to influence policy. Clearly, they, they do that. I've just said that. Um, and they're much more engaged in this than they are in, in, in the notion of designing and directing uh, from a distance. However, the supposed dichotomy between the role of the politician and the role of the bureaucrat is a limiting perspective uh, for an analysis of contemporary political activity and public service uh, management. In Ireland, the, the, uh, the politician is described as a specialist uh, for the bureau bureaucratically illiterate. Uh, I feel like that myself. I've been dealing with the Arts Council for a week. It's the working class who use uh, the clientelist system most. It's social welfare, housing, medical entitlement, uh, cases that dominate the, uh, 
uh, deputies, caseloads, whatever about marrying their daughters and looking after their lizards. These customer complaints, these customer complaints may not be heard if not facilitated by the uh, uh, politicians. And it's important to note uh, that the evidence uh, uh, from case studies suggests that this activity is fairly low-key anyway and fairly routine. Uh, now, I, I make the big exception here in relation to ministers. Uh, you know, lots of TDs uh, will claim to have influenced school buildings or sports facilities or lottery grants or what have you. We all know they haven't, but ministers have. So I'd leave ministers to one side, a different uh, category. Uh, I, yeah, well, I'll leave the ministers they, they, because you, you covered it in all that my department stuff this morning. So I, was just, I won't repeat all that, just my department, a shorthand for the next paragraph I was going to give, so I'll, I'll press on. Um, one uh, line of argument is that if we streamline the bureaucracy sufficiently and make them uh, service orientated, then there'll be simply no need for, there'll simply be no need for citizens to require uh, the pervasive in, uh, intervention of politicians. In time, this activity would become to be seen as a nuisance and wasteful. And the counter argument is uh, that this activity can have an important and beneficial role in uh, public service uh, provision. And the, its denigration and diminution of that role is seen as a result of poor communications between the citizen uh, and the state and constantly reduce the quality of uh, uh, public service. I suppose I should really explain that. But my point here is just to go into the script for a second. I think the image of the bureaucracy is the bureaucrats who make clean decisions. And a lot of cases they do. You go in, you describe yourself, yes, you're entitled to this, here it is. But in many cases, that isn't the case. Uh, and there are other things that they should uh, know, other things that they should uh, hear. And hearing them and knowing them will lead to better uh, uh, decisions. That's essentially my, uh, my point. And so I suggest, therefore, that the self-interests of politicians in appearing influential could be harnessed in the process of service delivery in a way which is an an analogous to uh, local managers of multiple uh, outlet commercial operations. So you go to QuickFit, you go to Aldi, whatever these places. The, your, your car is that year, it's that make, your demand is for this or that or what have you. Uh, it's clear cut. There is no real discretion there. And yet the management literature is full of telling us about the role of uh, the local manager in in uh, getting on to headquarters, asking for exceptions, asking for later opening hours on days, recognizing local sports teams, all that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of thing that man management schools teach you to, uh, uh, teach you to do. In, Tom Peters and the other people who books you buy in airports, you know, these uh, management books are supposed to, by the time you've arrived in Paris, you'll be a better manager. Regard the local person, the local annoyance, as a hero. And that's how I'd like to have the couture restored. I mean, it's a bit invective, I know, but I'd like to see the couture as hero. Uh, and I think it's uh, un unfair to do that. I can see I'm not winning here. Uh, I, all right, okay, I'll pass on from that. But, but I would, so I won't give you the rest, but I would say that we, we are in an economic mess which has come from, from uh, not making the right policy decisions. But we, if we had listened to more of the complaints which pointed out that a guard and a nurse married couldn't get a mortgage and couldn't afford a house, don't tell me, don't listen to the regulators telling me it's all about competition. Competition will get it right. Some of the time, the evidence, the data built up from the customers, sometimes the customers are right, uh, not at the Arts Council. <laughs> I was told to get off the Arts Council thing, it's just annoying me, that's it. All right, I'll, I'll leave the Arts Council alone. Right. Um, the research from other countries suggests that to get rid of corruption, what you need to do is have more democracy. But not just more democracy. We have lots of countries, we have had lots of countries which have been given democratic institutions in a very short period of time. They're in Eastern Europe, they're in former colonial countries in Africa, etc. They descend very quickly into to corrupt systems. You have to stick with the democracy. You have to have faith. I told you this was a religious meeting. You have to have uh, faith. Now, my other point, points, I'm rapidly on to the next. I'm nearly finished. I've only got these points. That's all I want to make. I feel a valuable part of our uh, uh, system are judges. I was in agreement mostly with what was said here about uh, the, the need to, to, uh, to protect the legal uh, system, sorry, not 
everything that Pat didn't say, I was in agreement with. The need to uh, keep it sacred. And part, however, as somebody over there was uh, suggesting, it would be easy to have a go at the judges. What, they're all D4, rugby playing, probably right-wing Catholics, whatever. What are the, come on, throw a few more insults. I'm sure we could collect one. Before the end of the afternoon, we'd have a real, uh, we would have a real populist attack at the, uh, the judges. We must protect the legal system from that danger. And while it's understandable in the initial, in the initial um, shock and scandal of the corruption uh, uh, system, say, what's the cleanest bit of the system? How can we use it? Uh, uh, we will uh, we'll go for, uh, for the judges. Uh, in the long run, that can't be sustained because it won't be very long before a judge will make a spectacular uh, mistake. An unpopular decision, a clearly wrong uh, decision. And We'll let, then the rhetoric will start and we'll undermine uh, the, the judges. I was pleased that one of my, actually, as I was actually here, one of my postgraduates texted me a, uh, uh, a reference. They're always so bloody late. Um, but it on the phone, I was able to look it up. Apparently, the Medical Council have done some research about who you would believe. And I don't have the whole thing here because it's a very small screen on my phone. But I was able to pick out professors at 72%. I suggest that's declining every minute. <laughs> uh, but judges weren't far behind at uh, 71. Uh, TDs were down at 12. Um, Avril, I'll have to say that uh, senators weren't uh, ranked at all. But if we, are to, if we are to protect that part of the system, we should stop using them in politically charged circumstances. That's my view. And this is the faith part, this is the clue. So I'm giving out about people not using the evidence, people not looking at other countries, not looking at the data, etc. And then my conclusion is completely about not looking at the data. So my conclusion is a belief thing. I believe that if we were to have more faith in our uh, legislature, stick with them longer, not just go through to the next um, um, shaggy TD story, but stick with them for a, long, a longer period of time, then uh, we would get to the higher levels of transparency and accountability that, uh, uh, that we require. And even though the people, even though the people uh, who won't be asked the same question again, they'll just be asked it differently, uh, rejected the referendum, even those people, 74% of the people who replied to the Red Sea um, uh, poll said they were in favor of greater uh, investigative powers to, uh, uh, to Parliament. So to combat political corruption in Ireland, I think, is in part a matter of faith in the strength of the tradition of our representative democracy. It is necessary that we do put in place the kinds of things that were being spoken about this morning in changing the rules. But the rules enough uh, won't do it. We need, to, we need our, uh, our parliamentarians to, to share in uh, a renewal of their ethical uh, standards and show ethical leaps and stay with it over a, long per a longer period of time. Uh, and that's more likely, it seems to me, to bring us to a better political place than complicated new electoral systems, uh, reducing, increasing, expanding, uh, declining the uh, n uh, numbers of politicians, etc. It's a matter of faith. It's a religious meeting. Thank you. I don't know how to get to that now.